What's up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to talk about Albemarle, ticker symbol ALB. Year to date, company is down 40%, and over the course of one year, down 53.4%. Company does have a little bit of a short interest against it. And they did just recently report their Q3 earnings and missed on bottom and top lines and gave forward looking guidance and actually reduced their forward looking guidance on it. net sales from 10.4 billion down to 9.5. This is for the rest of fiscal year 23. And then they also reduced their net cash from operations from 1.2 billion down to $600 million. So not looking too good in the near term future for this company based on what the company is guiding for us. So in their earnings release in their call, they mentioned a lot about how the cost of everything lithiums down, the spodium had cost them a lot of money to help produce lithium, but that has also started to trend lower. So the cost of this spodamine has since reduced in cost and price. So it shouldn't cost them nearly as much to produce lithium. However, lithium also in the last year has decreased substantially in its value. So over here on the earnings release on ALB, net sales year over year up. However, cost of goods sold, we can see over doubled in cost of goods sold. So that's a big contributor to why this company, this stock price is, has been hit so hard lately. So in the last quarter here, they, they went from $1 billion in cost of goods sold to $2.25 billion. Basically, it costed them the same amount as it did in sales. So they made basically no money. They made $55 million. And after they add in and subtract out other things here, they ended up with a net income of $320 million for the most recent quarter. Cash and equivalents. Companies got $1.6 billion in cash. They did add a little bit of cash in the last nine months. Not a lot. Inventories up though, went from $2 billion in inventories to $3.4 billion in inventory. So big uptick in inventories. That's another big key component to when investors see that they know that demand is shrinking and supply is now heavy so that's going to push down lithium prices potentially even more if there's going to be that much supply because these companies need to turn over inventories if they can't then they have to figure out a way to get rid of inventories so that's a, a little bit of another negative catalyst they've got inventories and then they've also got cost of goods sold which is impacting what this company is doing right now total current liabilities Long-term debt plus short-term debt equals $8.6 billion. And they've only got $1.6 billion in cash. So they, they've got a lot more debt than they do cash right now. Retained earnings. Company does have a good amount of retained earnings. They do have a current bid out for an acquisition for a company, I believe, in Australia for $4.3 or $8 billion. And currently that particular company is has handed that estimate over to, I believe, the board of directors and they are looking to potentially approve that that acquisition they've got 2.2 billion dollars of net income in the last nine months for 2023 here we come down they do have a sister company or a subsidiary that is producing a little extra in, uh, net income for them so that adds another 500 million dollars roughly of uh, 500 million to the cash flows uh, they do have changes within the balance sheet they came out negative 1.3 billion dollars mostly attributed to the increase in inventories. So that then gives them a CFO of $1.4 billion. Then we have CapEx of $1.465 billion. So basically CapEx soaked up all of their cash from operations, which left them with negative $42 million in free cash flow. In the last nine months prior year, uh, they were positive 140 million free cash flow. So this company has a lot of capital expenditures. Over here on the financials, we come over here, we have our revenue, gross profit, net income, all three trending higher. But as of lately, I believe this is going to roll over once the next full fiscal year is finished, which will be in the next quarter. So we'll probably see a little bit of a rollover on a lot of these numbers here. We're probably going to see a dramatic decrease in uh, potential net income there too. So we'll have to wait and see, but not looking too good forward looking, but Based on what we're seeing here, though, looking pretty good, was looking pretty good. Gross margin sitting at about 30% as of lately in the last quarter. They did 2.4% gross margin. Net margin, 27-ish percent, 13% currently. Revenue, gross profit, year-over-year -year change, no change really as of lately. A little bit, revenue up 35%, but gross profit uh, basically flats, actually a little bit negative at 6% negative. Return on invested capital sitting at about 12%. PE ratio currently 4.5. Earnings yield is at about 18%. So earnings yield and return on invested capital are not too bad. Cash to short-term debt and cash to debt. We already kind of went over that when we looked at their 10Q. 
and we know there is a lot more debt than cash. Net income to free cash flow, companies got has, you know, based on history there, uh, pretty decent net income, but not a lot of free cash flow because of how much capital expenditures it is on this company. So then share count dilution, they are not uh, diluting shareholders. They might be doing a little stock-based compensation. Yep, they got a little stock-based compensation up here, but for the most part, that is, uh, that's all they're really doing. So they're not really diluting shareholders at all. That's pretty good. Company does offer a dividend. Comps on the company, we have four other companies to compare to. We have just the one red flag over here on ALB, and that is just return on invested capital is slightly below 15%. So based on the competition here, we can see market cap, ALB leader in the market caps, SQM right behind them. Same thing over here. SQM actually looking like, hey, they, they have produced more revenue, gross profit, and net income than ALB. The growth rate at SQM, though, is looking negative, whereas ALB and the other competitors are looking positive for growth. We come down here, we only have margins on the first three companies here. And gross margin, we got ALB, the lowest gross margin, operating margin, and profit margin on the board. So SQM, margin-wise and revenue-wise, could be, could be worth a deeper dive. Free cash flow, same thing, SQM doing pretty decent there. We have return on invested capital. You know, we can kind of see who is kind of leading the pack right here. And I think SQM is the one that we should be paying more attention to based on what we're looking at. We can also see SQM's PE is sitting at 3.97 right in line with where ALB is. So that could be a, a company worth looking into more versus where ALB is sitting. And also we can see in the stock chart up here, ALB and SQM are identical in chart patterns. And we can also see here, they've got operating cash flow is slightly higher than net income. So that's the only red flag on this particular company. So I think SQM probably deserves a video uh, in the near future here. I think this is something worth looking into deeper is to see uh, how this company is performing. Over here on the calculator spreadsheet for ALB, we have Peter Lynch valuation, giving them a price target, a Peter Lynch fair value of $23.57. So we have two companies here that are not profitable. So multiples comparison between the two profitable companies is $176.81. Manual PE, we take our market cap minus cash, add in debt, divided by cash from operations, it'll take about 11 years to earn our market cap. Price the book, five-year average 3.04, currently at 1.48. Peg ratio 0.3 and forward-looking peg at 0.51. We have growth rate here only 82 and revenue growth rate of 15%. So 80, like basically 1% growth rate EPS, 15% growth rate revenue there forecasted for the next three years. Graham's valuation gives them a price tag of $224.42, dividend discount model, $131.71. Discount of cash flow. Analysts did not have a growth rate. History of 302%. Uh, I plugged in 20%. I'm actually going to probably change that because of what we have seen on their most recent earnings report. I'll give them 10% and that's probably being pretty generous. That gives them a DCF price per share of $71.72. Rule 72, we have three sources for a growth rate. Seeking Alpha had 64%, but again, this is a number I'm going to change more in line with where everybody else is. We'll give them 15% growth rate. So that gives them an average growth rate of 10%. So that 10 goes into 72, 7.49 times. Actually, it's 9.6 goes into 72, 7.49 times. That goes into 10 years, 1.3 times. So in that way, we can double our EPS one time and then 0.3 times. So if we were to do that, that would give us roughly a PE of maybe 70, which would then give us a fair value today of $336.00 and 27 cents. But because of the future outlook of the company, I'm going to make, change that. I'm going to put it at like, I'm going to keep it at about 30 because it doesn't appear to be much of a growth rate going forward, at least what we can see right now. So based on what we see right now, even with a future EPS of 30, which would be another dollar and 80 cents from where it's at now, would be a fair value of $144.12 per share. ALB is currently trading basically at $128 per share. Our fair market value that we just got based on all of the calculators we went through is $129, 30% margin of safety, $90, and us price target of $236 per share. And we do have 19 analysts covering this company. So you got 19 average analysts of about $236, 26 cents per share. 
but because of where the the outlook is of the company currently uh this is why we get a, such a low fair market value is because there's no future growth currently on the company um, based on what they're telling us they don't expect it to last they expect things to turn around but for the most part right now what this company is valued at is about 129 dollars with a 30 percent margin safety of 90 dollars per share but one thing we can do is play a little game real quick and see if this thing if this company can actually turn things around and let's hypothetically say that their eps growth rate forward looking is going to be like let's call it eight percent right so just just that we'll just change that one thing if we change that one thing to an eps growth rate of just eight percent which would be obviously should be pretty doable maybe because of how much it changed the peter valuation you know what let's give them let's just say four percent they got to change it four percent that'll give them a peter fair value today of 113 dollars per share multiples still 177 our grams valuation then turns into 365 dollars per share dcf will not change this should increase our fair value a little bit to 144 but what we could do is change our eps to 40 because then if we change our growth rate so then if we change our eps it's not it didn't change here but it would be four percent so that give us an average of 10.6 so 1.4 times either way it'll still change our fair value to about 213 dollars per share so then now we can assume potentially a fair market value of $179 with a 30% margin safety of about $125 per share. So if you think there's a chance that EPS is going to grow by 4%, which seems potentially likely, I mean, if things do turn around within the company and the cost of everything changes, demand comes back for lithium a little bit stronger than where it is right now, which is probably going to happen because obviously a lot of things are transferring over to EV and lithium is a very important product that it's very likely that we'll see an eps growth rate of about four percent you know i mean and then some potentially so that kind of gives you another idea that a scenario like if you think okay four percent is the growth rate then right now you're sitting at about a 30 percent margin safety on the company and also price target at 236 you know take that with a little bit of a grain of salt but you know that way you can kind of see okay four percent that's what it could do to the company and if we change it to six percent you know it's not going to change every single calculator that we talk about here but Again, you change it to 6%, you're looking at $203 per share. So, I mean, it kind of depends on where you think your price target or what your EPS growth rate is on the company. But currently, the growth rate is 0.82. So, when you plug in 0.82, it gives us a lot lower of a growth of, of a price target because there's no growth on the company. So, basically, we're valuing a company as it is, as it sits today, you know, based because there is basically no EPS growth rate. So, on the technicals for ALB, We've got a few trend lines drawn in here. We have what could be a resistance point of $180. We got a, tr a lower high trend line happening over here. We do find a bounce and some buyers step up here a little bit at about $120, $129 per share. If we find a bounce here, we could probably see it come back up to about $180 per share and then maybe uh, fade back lower depending on how things are forecasted for the future. Obviously, this company is going to trade pretty heavily based on the price action of lithium as lithium goes up higher this company will probably likely follow and if lithium continues to go lower and if it breaks its current support range uh this company is probably headed for some much lower price action but based on technicals here we our next support range is probably about 100 to 90 dollars per share which would be right in line with where our 30 percent margin of safety would be on this company but based on how it's currently trading it is very oversold at the moment we can see that it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we did see a little bit of a bounce a little bit higher but again it's really going to follow that whole lithium price chart because as lithium if lithium doesn't hold here and breaks down lower then there's a good chance that you're going to see the same thing happen to alb but if lithium finds its footings and may, and just kind of stays sideways there you know alb will probably do the same thing maybe even trend up higher a little bit is I think another key component to how ALB will trade is also going to be based on this spodamine price as well. If this continues to trend lower, I think that'll also contribute to higher price action on ALB on the stock chart as well. So I think basically this is going to trade based on, you know, what it's going to cost to make that lithium and what the price of lithium is doing currently. But that is what I got for ALB. If you found value in this video, drop a like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back later with another stock analysis video.